yeah, I have like 15 people that want to be interviewed. So I'm going to have to, well, I don't have to do anything, but I'm excited to chat with <laughs> you. You get to. <laughs> yeah. Um, and maybe it'll just push me to find a better way because it's, it's so far so good. I love that. But I'm curious to see. And and I'm curious to see what you guys are doing for yours because YouTube is <laughs> the way to go. That's where yeah. people go to search for things. Right. I know when I was speaking with my friend who does podcasting um, here, but he works with someone out of off the East Coast as well. He was saying he does all of his via Zoom like this. Yes. Then he will, if he wants, just drop it as an audio, but at least he has video so he can do snippets if he wants for like a visual prompt. Um, yeah. And then this can just drop right into YouTube. But he talked about using this Spotify for podcasters as well. So I was a little confused because I'm like, well, if you're doing it on Zoom, then what is Spotify for podcasters for? Do you drop in the pre recorded into that then? Yeah. Um, and then you can like, smash it together with your intro and all of that and it's super user friendly like right I didn't even use my computer for anything um you can I did it all on my phone I remember once I was interviewing someone from a closet because I was like on the road and we had this interview and I just went into like a health food store that I knew and like went into their storage closet and did an interview because um <laughs> and it worked like it was so yeah. easy and I that's just that's what I remember about this app it just being so easy and I loved it so yeah we'll see I might just have to like re-download the app or who yeah. knows or right right well I mean you said it's been a minute since you've had it it might have updates or need that yeah. you know that whole like did you unplug it, count to 10 and plug it in? Like one of those very yeah. simple moments where it's like, I'll do totally. the app and re-add it. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I hope or it's- Or I, I have a phone that's not so new, but who knows? Yeah. We, so we're we, just supposed to see each other probably. Probably. This is like yeah. uh, that we were like, when are we going to see each other before we go? And it's like, well, maybe it doesn't yeah. always have to be in person, although I do prefer in person. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. yeah. It's um, so yeah. So what are we doing? Are we gonna do a, this is recording so we can use the audio off of this if we want? Yeah, I guess it depends how much splicing and editing you want to do, but it's all available. Um okay. Well, why don't we take the next like 20 minutes and do as we were going to mm -hmm. um and see where the conversation goes so we can just kind of start yeah. now and then I can use that in mine in my podcast because it's super easy just to put um audios in okay um yeah so the the format of my stuff is yeah two two formats I'm either interviewing someone or someone like yourself like approached and said hey I have some questions and yeah. in the past I used to just do them live because I would do them on Facebook live usually because then other people can learn and it's my way of I got to the point in my business where I was just like, other people need to know this. And um, I used Facebook live all the time to do, do like double video. And then I could repurpose that um, on YouTube and I would put it on, you know, use that one 20 minute session and use it in multiple different places, um, which was cool. And then at the time we were doing video. So we were using the video and it's really, really neat how many different ways you can repurpose one conversation I'm seeing this so far I keep thinking I have to have so many different um videos and then as I really dissect it and watch closely I'm like oh that's like from the same video just pulled apart in different ways and added in different spaces I'm like okay yeah I see. It just yeah. minimizing the amount of computer time in my life is my goal <laughs> yeah and yeah. really like these these days people are like recording their podcast podcast even when they're on walks and like yeah you can do it however you want and people can listen or they don't have to and it's yeah. um I think I always taught like it's whatever you want to do otherwise you won't do it if it's right. annoying if it takes time it, it won't be part of your life um mm -hmm. So yeah, why don't we uh, pretend like we just called on a podcaster app and <laughs> get take <started>. three. <laughs> <laughs> so, <Yay! laughs> we did it. Uh, We're gonna do it all well, one run, one hit. It's gonna be perfect. We are. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, um, one question I love asking everybody is, "Who are you, and who do you help?" Ooh. 
it seems like such a simple question, right? When I knew you were going to ask it, I was like, who am I? Oh, the eternal question. <laughs> who are we all? <laughs> uh, my name is Ricky, Ricky Will Warwick. Um, I am the founder of Wise Owl Yoga and Ayurvedic Wellness. We started that in 2017. And it's kind of gone through many, it's had the ability to hold many different offerings because of the umbrella that it is. And so um, I enjoy the perpetual curiosity I hold for the birth and death cycles, as well as all cycles, uh, whether it be seasonal, astrological, uh, womb cycles for biological women, how is it all affecting the cycles of nature and the ebb and flow of water and just it's so fascinating to me and that curiosity really drives I think what I do most for people which is hold a really safe space to be seen and heard and see how to wade through the water like the shadowy waters of our life that that thing that we don't ever want to talk about which is grief and death and endings and attachment to things um, when we feel that this life is just so real and tangible that it can very quickly at some point we'll all experience some existential crisis and I think what I know to be true about myself is as a little person and as a child all the way till now that has been a consistent theme in my life is that question of like who am I why am I here why is it kind of uncomfortable all the time? What's my purpose? Why do I do these things? And when I found for me, Ayurveda um, to be really supportive in that, because it's all about patterns and finding rhythm and living in a routine and ritual system that works for you. And, and I know people kind of squinch at the word routine, and what I mean by routine is that it does become a ritual and a ceremony to go through your life as a, a practice of intention and that even the most micro experiences are, are the experience of a birth and a death and a rebirth over and over again. And so when I can bring that down to this really small level, then the big questions, the big experience doesn't feel maybe as... Um, as what it could feel like when you imagine uh, like a door opening on a jet plane where you're like boom, being sucked out and it's like, whoa, I'm floating in space and I don't know how to work through this. And so I think holding that space and getting embodied. So bringing these really fun and, and sometimes scary cognitive expressions into the body and then feeling, feeling it because that can be really scary to do alone, uh, which I've done a lot of. So that's how I help people is to hold fun musing, musings and just the conversation of a real moment of an experience that can feel really big and, and having it become a part of the journey that you're on because you needed to be there to experience it, to move forward. Yay. Mm. <laughs> Yay. Um, and I will admittedly say that I, this is relatively new to me in the conscious world I've I've in the past people have always said oh you're so spiritual and I really didn't know what that meant or you got an old soul or I just you know very living my life by intuition or um, just got feeling and just knowing this inner knowing and um, just in the past six months have I really started to listen to stuff and of course you pop up that's how the world works is um when we're <laughs> vibrating at a certain frequency or expanding into a different um, conversation, like attracts like. So it's really cool because I, it's new to me in the 3D. I think I know it in my body and my soul and um, comes naturally. So it's really cool to have the actual conversation. Um, and recently I've been drawn towards, you know, that that trip from the mind to the heart through the breath. And I, I've been introduced it long time ago and it comes and it goes, and it's really neat to hear uh, what you have to offer. And in a sense um, with just grief and death, and that's always been a subject for me as well, that I've 
I'm so comfortable with, with it. And a lot of people aren't in my background in Vipassana meditation. I remember my first one when I was 24 and they would talk about, you know, the art of dying, the art of living, the art of dying. And I was just so comfortable with it. And I just thought it was a beautiful thing. And I never really looked into it or talked to people. And recently I've had conversations in the past two years with a specific human who is really scared of that. So it's my first um, kind of, it's starting to come into my life and I, it's all new to me. And I think that I'm excited to have the conversations because I think that I'll maybe be able to have them without really, uh, I haven't studied any of it or, or really consciously looked into it. So yeah, all new to me and maybe not. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's like a, a huge echoing voice in me that's like reverberating in my cells that's like you do know all this you're born into it like you're a Scorpio you are the death sign <laughs> so this would be very it is more natural for a Scorpio to be in the watery shadows in the death in the experience of questioning and wanting to know deeper and wanting to like pull it all out and sometimes getting really almost stuck down in those waters sometimes in I think that's where, uh, you know, having an opposite attract is nice because it's like, okay, I think you're going to pull you out, you know, like attracts like, but opposites will balance. So it's like, oh, let's find how to pull this, the Scorpio back from those depths a little bit. But uh, every time I'm hearing you speak, uh, and since I've met you, Steph, this thought of like, you're just a natural witch. <laughs> <laughs> you were just born into it and it just is. So you won't need to question it. I think the only time you'd probably have to question it is when someone questions it and you're like, actually, I didn't, I don't know. Kind of like, a, you don't know what you don't know, but you do know and it just is. And so what I know to be true about you is you're manifesting powerhouse. <laughs> I'd be interested in your human design because you're probably a manifesting generator um, and I touch lightly on that because I don't know a lot in case there's people who are like, whoa, she talks about human design. I am like tip of the iceberg. But like if you're a manifesting generator, you don't, if the more you seek for what you're looking for, the further away it gets. You're so the, you get the idea, you generate the idea, and then it manifests by you being in multiple situations and basically networking. And then they come towards you. And then if you go forward to grasp it, it goes away again. There's other human designs that are meant to go grasp. And that tends to be where we float in and out. So yeah, you just have this like natural ability to do it. And then the the conversation gets really fun actually when you can have the, the dark grief conversation where it lightens it a little bit. I think that uh, anyone who can feel grief, feel sorrow, no death, maybe intimately, maybe not so intimately, but ponder it and be understanding of it. Again, even in the micro, like every inhale is life, every exhale is death. And then we cycle back every morning we wake, we're rebirthed. We live every night. We go through a death as we close our eyes and, and surrender and give hope that we get to have that next morning again. Which in perspective, when thought in that way, which can be a little challenging, makes you really grateful for all those little moments that you have in a day, gets you really aware of where you're putting your energy. And so again, what I know to be true about you is where you tend to put your energy is very conscious and careful. And um, for me, in in my experience with you, which I'm pretty... I don't want to say I'm really picky about who I spend time with, but I definitely take good care of my energy budget. And so I know when I'm around people who uh, take out one too many deposits from that and I'm like, I don't want that so much. Like that doesn't actually feel, I don't feel abundant with my energy at the end of that conversation or that experience. I come away from you're one of those uh, souls that I can position in my life that I know would bring more fulfillment, brings more abundance, brings more manifesting power, 
just by having a conversation. So I find that exciting. And, and that leads all back to this podcast moment episode. <laughs> yes. And I would um, ditto there because I'm just getting back into the world and this, you know, spending our conversation this morning, you know, first thing in the morning, um, you know, plant basically clearing my schedule, like full force towards you basically. And that's not me with anyone else, really. It's with very select people. And that's how I live my life is just towards what I'm drawn towards. So I don't even have to say anything, but ditto, I, I feel the exact same way. And I'm really curious because about so the where we're born and the only thing that's certain is that we're gonna die. So like why are people so shocked and miserable and like trying to keep their relatives alive? And like that's a question I, I remember coming up in when I was 24 in the meditation of like, why are people surprised? Like we know yeah. that's gonna happen. That's pretty much yeah. the only thing we do know. Yeah. Fair and a and a solid question that can take us really deep and in many different ways that could get really debatable people could get right this turns into a yes and moment <laughs> how do you hold both um my personal opinion <laughs> on that is that there's um there's an element of control over people when they're fearing death because the fear of an inevitable end and loss creates a false safety in repetition that creates what I think is a very gray and dull experience of life. And why would anyone want to do that to us humans is a good question in my mind, which I don't think I can go down that avenue just for this podcast purpose. I think that if we can question and get comfortable with the darkness of death, it will allow us to get out of the gray and come back into the lighter spaces. And if you even think about, I mean, we're relatively in the same generation. <laughs> think about the movies you grew up on, the reality of things. I mean, I was a full-blown Disney princess, <laughs> raised child, which really didn't help my <laughs> adult life in, in relational aspects from time to time, but it doesn't really give a really true impression of the way the world is. It ends at the best part. It ends at the beginning, really. And you're like, whoa, I'm always trying to live a life at the beginning, never really experiencing what the end is. Because when you get to kind of the end, they're like, Da, 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 da. something else happens you don't really have to experience it. anything too challenging you'll be saved and it's like mm, I don't really know how I feel about that I question I questioned it a lot and I think that brought us into this space so we are really stuck in this human 3d form you know you said it you're like this 3d space and we're acknowledging that there's an ascension process that we are not these vessels this is just a vessel with you know uh molecules and electrons and particles that move at a certain rate that makes us we all feel real but we're energy moving we're just energy and experience energy in motion right and when i think about what i can't see what i visually can't see but i can feel if i stay uh oriented to my source my I'm sourced in my reality of this ordinary reality um then death doesn't become such an intense thought anymore because it's energy if this vessel perishes which yes I would be I'm sure people would be sad and and once it's perished I won't be sad I'll be gone but this energy has to go somewhere. It's not just like gone. And I think that's where ancestral spirits and intuition and guides come in where it's like, oh, well, I sometimes can hear my grandma say, I'll be walking around. And I'll be like, I gotta get something done. She'll be like, put your nose to the grindstone, Ricky. And I'll have this memory. But I'm like, whoa, that felt so real. And it's like, 
her energy is floating around here somewhere, dropping us into it. So the experience of us as energy beings allows the certainty of us living on forever because energy doesn't go anywhere. It just stays forever cycling. So yeah, which is, <laughs> um, I always in the past, I would be able to blend the like very scientific stuff with the woo woo. That was kind of my expert and expertise. And that's exactly what that is, is like you go in your science books and that's true too. Right. Um, but energy cannot be created or destroyed. So um, yeah, I, that was quite the heavy question that I asked and um, to heavy perceived heavy to other people to me I just like yeah whatever it's just like that's just my normal of yeah what I know and I'm curious as to why what do you think about this conversation and the like um how quickly it happened and why are we here like what is the intention of this conversation and what if you can think back to when before you messaged me hey let's have a conversation around these three points um that was just a hit of inspiration for you and what was the key focus that you were maybe thinking of like what you wanted to talk about or ask um or if it simply was just a hit of this needs to happen and I'm going for it right um uh, really good question and I like how you just pulled it in that was great yeah moments before I texted um I was in my morning ritual which tends to be very uh moody and emotional time for me every morning I wake up there's a, a check-in with my subconscious what did I dream of how did that feel and then there's usually a residual feeling or a sensation in my body and it kept just saying like Steph Steph and I didn't know what. And I was like, okay, is it, do I need to message her? Because we all need to hang out as a family. And I'm like, no, there's something deeper. But I think it has to do with like parenting, mothering. And then like, yeah, it's deeper than that. And it just wouldn't settle every time I would kind of touch on it, brushing my teeth. I'm like, maybe it's this. No, okay, move on. Go make some coffee. Maybe it's this. No, like uh, not texting yet at this point because I can't quite nail down why I needed to message. And then it it kind of like exploded a little in my heart, and I would felt ease. And I was like, oh, it's talking about how energy, how our energy that we put out <clears throat> relates to our cycles in business and what we can do as, as identified women, biological women and mothers that balances this with mothering because this waking up, how, you know, I have these magnificent ideas and I'm fantastic at what I do and you're fantastic at what you do. And I'm like, we both seem to be these like powerhouse can like get an idea, run with it and support people to get them to where they need to be. And I tend to then end up on this bit of a hamster wheel where I'm like, how do I get that off the runway without throwing all the other things out of balance? Like being a mother, having my friendship base, going out to do my play, my work, my partnerships, all those experiences. And it felt like when I thought of you, when I was experiencing those uh, emotions and those thoughts, I found ease. And so there wasn't really a, like, this is the way it is. I kind of blurted out a little of what I thought and it seems to find its own way. This is the beauty of musing <laughs> that there is just a comfort within your presence and in, in my vision that felt I needed to go that way and that I would find the answer. <laughs> Makes sense. Yeah. That I, uh couldn't ask for anything more than somebody thinking of me and, and feeling ease. And um, I've told people that I've straight up like told relationships, like if, if this doesn't bring you ease, then it's not for you. And this might be a conversation that we can have in the future because um, I very much 
go with the flow and go with the ease. And maybe part of my shadow work, which I haven't really gone down is, you know, maybe I run instead of working into it. And um, I had a pretty cruisy life, like living, following intuition and going with the flow. And so, yeah, it'll be interesting just to have those conversations around um, that because I, I did, and <laughs> I did hear you say that of um, people often don't go down the struggle or the work or the growth. And um, yeah, I could definitely the fight or flight. I'm definitely get get out, just run. And since having a, a child, I haven't been able to do that as fast because I can't just get on a plane and leave or run with with my three year old here and, you know, family here. And um, so it's interesting. Maybe it will be the next few years that that all come into that a bit more um so yes thank you for sharing that that is I'm just getting back into my purposeful work and um it is very reaffirming to know that you came into my world and even going to the gym and like I was in hermit mode as most of us were for the past four years and coming out of it feels so good. And I knew for the past year it would happen. And, and it wasn't until maybe a month ago that I actually emerged. So people are showing up and going to the gym and, and it's showing up. People are coming into my space and telling me their story and wanting to sign up for my stuff just from me existing. As you said before, my purpose with the manifestor generator is have the idea, then go do the networking. And that's to a T what I do when my business was doing the best it was back before I had a, a baby. That's all I did. I went to yoga. I talked to people. I, I, yeah, that was exactly what I did. And that was my revenue generating activities and it worked. Um, so yeah, it, I, I'll see what happens with this next evolution with it. And again, thank you. You're proof that <laughs> it's, it's happening again. It's great. I think I want to touch on that. Yeah, having a child, if you're if you're open to the experience of doing the shadow work and just surrendering to it, um, a child will help you get there right fast, like toot sweet. Yeah. <laughs> I think all of, I thank every day for my children as everything that can be from joy to pain to sorrow or elation uh the work that has come about to heal my shadows or to go into them and heal any of the wounds I've especially mother wounding um come from the way I show up with my children that I can't run either I absolutely have bounced from like anxious attachments to like full-blown abandonment like I'm just gonna abandon this I'm gonna go um, I'm going to get away from here or feel abandoned and then attached to it and to, to witness, you know, even when that might come up in my own children as well, because I work with children, I see it in multiple levels as well within their experiences. There's so, if everything is just a mirrored experience, then I can see, oh, is this me overlaying this on them? And then there's a discomfort. Was that from them, from me, are we finding the ease, right? Like if it's about easy, does it? And our job here on planet earth, while we're here, we are pleasure beings. We are sensory creatures. We live with our senses, which is why it's so easy to get stuck on tech. <laughs> so if we're like experiencing things through our sensory, when you're in a moment with your child and it makes you like, maybe there's a moment where you're like, I want to flee. Like, I want to get out of here and go do this thing. That mere moment is exactly the, the antidote to the experience that you're having that might've taken you away. That creates the wound over and over again, because you get to stay in, and wade in the waters and be like, hmm, like paddling, like you like your child in a little wading pool. And they're like, ah, just how do we find a way? This is kind of the root of all of my experiences or offerings. How do we find a way to see the opportunity in the discomfort? This is so freaking uncomfortable. And something huge is going to come out the other side of this. Because what I know to be true, and most all people I've spoken to, 
the harder it is, the bigger the reward off the other side. And so to live in the in between for the time that we need to experience it because we can't rush a bloom of a flower. You can't tell nature to hurry up. So yet we tend to do this as our human selves, like, oh, hurry up, we need to do it. I should know. I figured it out cognitively, so I should know better. And then we get in the should space, right? We're shoulding all over the place. But we come out of that and go to like, oh, right, there you are again. Oh, that part of me, because it's not all of me. Oh, that part of me that wants to flee right now. Hey, little person probably in there, because I, I I don't think it's an adult person really. I think that little, that's a probably a younger version of ourselves that feels scared of something or needs tending to. And if it's in reflection of a child, I tend to believe that it's around that same age or a little older, where maybe that age of child you're with, that's creating maybe a moment, a triggered moment, is that age or time of life for you, was it protected in a way it needed to be? And so you grew and the slightly older version of you tends to be around teenage time is like, I'm protecting this right now. And the best way a teenager usually knows how to protect is get out, fight it, like shut it down, close the door, slam it, like freak out, do something. And so we almost need to go to that version and go, hey, you did a great job protecting this version of me, this part of me. And you can, I'm here now. I'm a mama now. I can do this. And and I can tend to this part because look at, I'm doing it actually out here right now. So if this person deserves it, so do I. And I can tend to both. So you're almost like working with two at the same time. So mm -hmm. yeah, anyways. <laughs> That's where I think yeah. uh, I have like six, six things I want to say in my head and I want to see what time it is. Yeah. Um, and I'm laughing because I've, I've locked my doors so that nobody interview or in interrupts our interview. And oh, yeah. um, lately I've been, the stuff I've been listening to is like your spirit guides are protecting you. Um, and anyways, and as I hear my door, like people trying to get in and it's locked, I'm just chuckling to myself and I'm just looking at you and so happy we're, we're together. And, um with all of that um I'm forgetting my questions because I'm just laughing at like the things that are coming up that are manifesting in the 3D that I know and I've been thinking of and then it's just more proof um so with the everything in v in Vipassana that which is like my go-to it's just the type of meditation is everything is temporary it comes and it goes so sit in that discomfort it will come and it will go. And we know that everything is temporary. So that's always been my safety in like anytime there's a storm and um, three years, three months of being a mom in like the worst, really bad pregnancy, like I always just came back to that. And I never felt like I had to run when I was with my kid at all. It was running from relationships um, or work things. Um, so I'm very at peace with being a mom and the the um yeah it's been the work stuff or the like it's just out of alignment or the relationship stuff um what I want to ask to you um we could talk all day if people are resonating with your voice or they want more of you you're kind of hard to find like you're not on social media um everything ranging from like I know you're going to start a podcast it's not live yet if someone's listening and they want more of you right now what um how do people get access to you with you all the way from it's free to them it's no work for you maybe you've got some recorded stuff some free resources all the way to um maybe your your biggest offering if somebody uh, wants to work with you there um what is the easiest way for people to get a hold of you uh, great question. <laughs> um, did my website, hands down, my website is the best way. Uh, Wise Owl Yoga and Ayurvedic Wellness, not the easiest, <laughs> long title. But if you actually type in Wise Owl Yoga, you'll find me and that through my email. Um, it's interesting. Um, this image came up because I used to say when I was really really little I think I was just an old person from a young age <laughs> that I was going to be this old woman 
who had, who lived in the forest and people had to find me, but they were always welcome. And they would always have a way to heal, to come to my home because I would have those antidotes or remedies and medicines for them. And this feels like this moment where it's like, you're kind of hard to find. <laughs> but I also, again, manifesting generator, it's like, they'll find you do tend to be found when uh when someone wants to be found they can be so <laughs> um my website my email all my information is in there and then um I do a lot of pro bono work so it's sliding scale for the most part uh and there is a big so there's a couple I have an intensive that runs six weeks that we start any time um, we do just, I have one-offs, which are just better conversations, how to have better conversations and say what you want to say. And it maybe gets cleaned up a bit. So maybe there's a conversation we're having and it's full of violent communication, which nonviolent communication is a really great book for people to read into where it just even like saying the word should would be considered a violent word because it just is full of pressure and not enough and coulda, shoulda, wouldas, you know? So better conversations is just us having a musing like this for an hour and letting go and letting it move around. And then I hold where the flow of the conversation is to help you kind of distill down what's important to you and to go out in the world and feel confident having your individual conversation with your own worth and authority without fearing the narrative that's going on out there that you can hold both. You can hold opposition while staying in your truth. And then I have uh, starting next April, I'm working with a business partner that I went to school with and we have a becoming apprenticeship that starts next April. We're trialing it right now where we're living it because it's a one year program where we take you through um, the stages of uh, child maiden, wild woman crone, and then how that overlays every month with that zodiac, your womb cycle, we're, we're teaching you how to track your bleed cycle while seeing how that overlays with zodiac work, being a woman, experiencing the world as it is and how to find your balance in it. And then when you come out of that, that you've lived the way we would have as wild woman, uh, from the beginning before everything was kind of stuck down and moved in a linear line. <laughs> uh, and then I have a grief circle that will be starting again next, like this fall. And that'll be in person. So that's not online. And that'll be here, here in Cumberland, BC. So all of those things are on my website. <laughs> okay. Um Two questions. How many people are you taking in the, the year long course starting in April? Yeah, we're taking no more than nine. Okay. And then second question. Before we leave, did you have any questions for me? <laughs> I have all the questions for you. <laughs> um, yes. When you feel that you're just at a complete block as a woman and a mother and the desires you want in your life, you know they're there, but you're they're just out of reach. What is a ritual or what is something that brings you comfort to, to move you through that experience and go forward again to the next day and keep reaching? Um, breath, Vipassana and audios. Those are my three go-tos, um, and movement. I, it's not even, I don't even have to think anymore. It just happens. Um, and I have a lot of those things that are in my routine anyway. Um, hands down, if I'm feeling whirly and just ungrounded, I go to an audio. If, if my mind is just like, if I don't want to start with meditation, and that'll be something along the lines of Abraham Hicks, or um, I just got onto another girl that she talks a lot about the stuff that I'm now learning about 3D and the 5D, and she's been a go-to. Um, in the past, I had business affirmations I would listen to, uh, but Abraham Hicks, hands down, yeah. um, has been my go-to for the last 10 years. 
And then Vipassana meditation is just a style that I'm used to. And all that it is, is um, breath work and then uh, sensations in the body and um, getting still. And in the past, you know, like if I didn't know what to do, it would simply just to get to a yoga class. Um, if I felt like I needed the guidance of a teacher or I didn't want to be by myself, I wanted the support of the room. Um, and then lately it's been dance and movement as well. Um, that's it. Nice. There's a lot yeah. and I like it. <laughs> like yeah. so many jewels in that jewel box there. <laughs> Take it. Yeah. And a lot of mirrored again. I love that you named Abraham Hicks in that. <laughs> love, yeah. love Abraham Hicks. Um, yeah. I do have one more question, if that's okay. Yeah. Um, how do you, how do you handle being in the face of opposition in real time? Uh, give me an example. I don't know. Like, can you think of an example since yeah. you've known where that's been? Right. Well, like say we're having a conversation and you don't agree with what I'm talking about. Like you strongly disagree with what I'm talking about and you're in the face of it and you're feeling this visceral, this somatic experience coming up in you. How do you move through that in real time until you can get to probably a safer space where you can say, okay, now I'm going to work through that because I can't have that conversation with that person. So it was hard for me to connect because I wouldn't see that necessarily happening with us. And I have all, so I'm thinking to like a work situation or a relationship. Those are where my sticky bits get. I do not engage in, in conflict. I like my go-to is just to basically smile and nod, let that person talk and then kind of peace out. I don't actually engage in those debates or those conversations never have. Um, yeah, we could probably talk about that one for hours. Um, that's, I don't actually necessarily, I'm trying to think of the last time I got worked up. Um, it was probably at work and, um, yeah, my go-to is this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yep. I let them talk, let them, and then just go about my business. <laughs> yeah. Rightfully so. Oh, these could go so far. Cause there's so many more yeah. questions. Yeah. We'll talk about that off. <laughs> yeah <laughs> but I I'm fascinated by this I love watching people through you know being it we just lived through it for four years right just constantly being in the face of opposition and not knowing and how to regulate because you don't know if you can be yourself while right. being in the world so I'm curious how everyone is starting to come through that now when we're coming back to some sense of normalcy but still can we have conversations and what will that pluck a string on someone that we don't know? So maybe it was a gift in a way that we get to be more aware of what we're talking about now, instead of just like spewing and not realizing that we have to be a little more uh, responsible for what we're saying and how it affects others, as well as giving the other person the opportunity to be responsible for their own, um, their own, experience of what the conversation is and not having to take ownership of what someone else's experience is while still knowing where we are a part of it and it's just really fascinating to me um because I mm -hmm. tend to enjoy conversations that are a little sticky <laughs> and it's like oh I'd like listening yeah. to hearing it so and I sense that you're a strong yeah. you're just you're a strong person and I would be in love with watching you have a conversation that is in opposition in a little debate let's see because you're just your energy in itself and that in itself could be it you don't have those conversations because your energy is enough to be like full stop you have enough this much space to have that for yourself and that is yours this is mine and I'm going to go over here now so that in yeah. itself is wisdom yeah and I'm remembering one other time during the COVID times of yeah, people would approach me and were were worried about me because I wasn't vaccinated and I held no attachment to it. And I they would be grilling me like, can you just explain to me why? Why aren't you doing it? And my answer would be like, no, it's just I have this confidence and knowing in my gut and my soul that of what I do in my life and I have no explanation for it. It's just what I do. It's I know what to do and that's it. So that's as far as the conversation went and there was no 
maybe they were angry or whatever, but I'm just like, no, can't explain. And I, I don't actually have an explanation. It's just it's what I'm doing. And it's, I have such full confidence in it um, because it's what I know from the inside. So yeah, yeah it's that's going um, to be true about you for sure. I think this has come up a few times in, in um, other scenarios where you're just like, I just know. And, and the right to your not needing to explain it. It just is. You don't have to explain that to anybody. Just like no one else has to explain anything if they don't want to. We have to just sit with working out what it is in ourselves that might bother us about that person's actions or reactions or, or response. But yeah, definitely something strong that you hold that seems to be a very um, integral I'd say integral pattern that happens effortlessly for you is that you move with when something has uh, welled up enough and then is brimming. You're like, I'm moving with it. And and in the most, um, I want to say the most proactive way, like the way that brings you to the next spot, the next level of your evolution, because I don't see that being uh, a desperate anxiety driven movement of like, I'm scared and I need to make this move. So I'm going to do it. And it might generate something completely different. It is, you're really tapped into the, the heartfelt knowing. So this is good and right for me. This is what I'm going to keep moving on because life would want me to go forward in the good and right for me, because when it's good and right for you in a very healthy, not desperate way, it, it's like dropping a pebble in water, it ripples out and it'll just keep rippling, which means it will help other people by helping yourself. So I like this about you. And, it, and I feel those ripples when I'm with you. I, I selfishly can say I like spending time with you because I'm like, I feel, I feel, I feel so freaking good. I'm going to go out and I'm going to get shit done. Oh, I said shit. I get to get stuff done. I said it twice. <laughs> Sorry. I just moved this from like a PG to something else rated more <laughs> i um i didn't get kicked off itunes when someone else swore so i think we're good okay. <laughs> um i would i'm in the same boat with you and that's my i know it's bigger than me and to live my sole purpose um my and with business revenue generating activities it is these connections it's you know i'm just like you very selective of my energy it's you know my biggest currency and um to date, I felt the exact same and which is why we can't get off the phone right now, right? Like usually these interviews are 20 minutes and boom, bang, done. Yeah. And yeah, we, and I am so confident in vibe and frequency that I don't even worry or think or plan. And I know that stuff comes up with divine timing. So yes. I'm going to go see who's knocking on my door. No, I'm not. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna it's me. Shower and it's <laughs> you. There you are. Um, once I get my podcast platform working again, I think we should probably do a series. Uh, yeah. 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 When, um, ours is going, you'll be one of the people we bring on for the yes. And to start moving these pieces, it's going to be lit. It's going to be awesome. These are yeah. all live together. <laughs> it is. Yeah. And voice and frequency and like throat chakra. It's so like podcasts are magic and it like you can access so many people and yeah, podcasts have always been one of my go-tos to stay in my vibration. So I'm happy to get the getting back on the scene. Super yeah. amazing yeah. that you are because like, even though people might not find you in the woods and your witchy cabin, like they can open up their phone and you don't even know that you're helping them. They just have to press play. So, totally. so yeah. stoked that you're starting and um, we'll definitely be in touch. I like it. Yes, we are. Ah. Like five okay. Yes. <laughs> okay. I will send this to you. <laughs> okay. All right. Love you. Love you. Mm -hmm. Bye. Bye.